Hey guys, Drew here, and welcome back to another YouTube video. So today I wanted to talk about how to shoot an S-Log2 on the Sony a7C. And while this video mostly pertains to the Sony a7C, which is the camera that I have, the information that is covered can also be applied to other Sony cameras such as the Sony a7 III or the Sony a6000 series or any other Sony camera that features an 8-bit 420 codec. So what is S-Log? I want to begin with what S-Log is and what it isn't. I've been hearing a lot of other YouTubers say that when you shoot an S-Log, it allows for more flexibility while you shoot and more flexibility in post-production. And I want to say that this isn't technically correct in my experience at least. I can see what they're trying to say, but in practice, the margin of error when you're shooting in S-Log is actually less than when you're shooting in a standard picture profile. To put it simply, S-Log is a picture profile that alters the gamma curve of your camera's sensor. It changes the way that your camera inputs light and color data into pixels that allows for it to capture more information at the expense of the image that comes straight out of camera being less consumable. What this means is that the image that comes out of the camera must go through color correction in the post-production process, which is what ultimately allows for your image to look normal again. This picture profile allows for more dynamic range, which is one factor in what makes an image seem like cinematic. So what is dynamic range? Dynamic range is the number of light values between the darkest darks and the brightest brights of your image, and it's measured in stops. High dynamic range, or HDR, means that there is more stops of light in between these areas. If you've ever played around with HDR on your phone, you'll notice that if you're taking a picture of a building that has a bright blue sky behind it, you can see the detail of the building and the skies, while the SDR, or standard dynamic range setup, would either expose for the building or the sky with details being lost in either part of the image. However, when you're using a new mirrorless or a cinema camera, this dynamic range can only be unlocked by using a log profile and then color correcting that image in post rather than doing it straight in the camera, like in an iPhone. So how does it work? When you take a video with the standard settings on your camera, you achieve a somewhat true to life image in regards to color and contrast. If you enjoy this look, then that's pretty much all that you have to do. However, when you dig deeper into the subject, you'll find that these cameras offer so much more in the hardware that allow you to capture images with much more detail and information. The reason Hollywood movies look different than home videos is that these cinema cameras can deliver 15 or more stops of dynamic range, while the camera in standard settings delivers around seven or eight. With S-Log2 and the Sony a7C, Theoretically, you can get up to 14 stops as advertised by Sony. Log curves are offered by many different camera companies and S-Log is Sony's specific formula. What it does is it squeezes all of the light information that is captured in front of the camera sensor into a log curve rather than the standard linear curve. This way, when you expose an image, the shadows are lifted and the highlights are dropped, creating a low contrast, low saturation image. Theoretically, if you expose for S-Log correctly, you should be able to drop the shadows and lift the highlights while you're editing your video so it more closely represents the linear gamma curve our eyes are used to see. With this, we are able to retain more highlight and shadow detail than when shooting in your basic picture profile because all the data is squeezed into a certain range of light values. Pitfalls of S-Log S-Log is not perfect. The problem with S-Log per Sony and other filmmakers testing is that you need to overexpose your image in order to minimize noise in the shadows and midtones. This is why when YouTubers say that S-Log allows for more flexibility, I'd say not really because there's a very specific exposure range that you need to hit in order to get a usable image. How to expose with S-Log 2. If you look up Sony's recommendations for exposing S-Log2, they will give you a set of parameters to follow. One is the clipping point, and the other is how many stops of overexposure are recommended. The clipping point of S-Log2 is 106, so how I recommend using this number practically is by using a custom zebra setting, but we'll get into that in just a sec. First thing to do is navigate to your picture profile settings on page 11 of your camera settings tab. Select PP7 and make sure your gamma is set to S-Log2, your color space is set to s gamut 3 cine and that your detail is set to negative seven. Leave everything else as default. I think that out of the box, the color space is set to S gamut, but as that is a wider color space, it's more difficult to color grade and introduces a green tint to your image, but use that if you prefer that look. So back to the zebras. Zebras are a tool in your camera that basically read the luminance level of a part of your image and overlay a zebra line animation over that level. To set your zebras, go to page 7 of the second camera settings tab and click zebra settings. Switch this to on and set your lower limit to 105 plus. I put the zebras one below clipping so that I can make sure none of the RGB channels will be unrecoverable in post. 
If you want to be even safer, lower this to 104. The next thing to do is to switch your gamma display assist on, and it works by estimating the S-Log picture profile into a more Rec. 709 color space. Just know that when you record in the gamma display assist, it doesn't record as the colors you see on screen, but will instead record into the S-Log profile so you will need to color correct in post. So, when exposing your image, set your ISO to 500 or whatever your base ISO is and your shutter speed to 1 over 50 when using a frame rate of 24 frames per second. These two settings should basically be a given before you start breaking the rules of the exposure triangle for more personalized or creative styles. Then lower your aperture or ND filter or increase your exposure until you can see zebras. And once you see the zebras, decrease your exposure by one stop. There you go. That's basically all you need to do in order to make sure that your image is all within the confines of what S-Log2 can capture. And this makes sure that you're properly overexposed or exposed to the right as much as you can before losing information. From here, you'll need to either use a correction LUT to convert the image into a standard Rec. 709 color space. And if this video gets enough traction, I can make a video on how to do that. So should you shoot an S-Log? As you can see, shooting an S-Log can be a bit tricky at times, but once you understand what the log curve is and the limitations of it, you can get a really dynamic image. However, if the need to overexpose and color correct in post is too much work for you, then don't even worry about it because shooting in a standard picture profile these days is actually pretty nice. The new Sony cameras have updated color science, which allows for a more pleasing filmic look straight out of camera. And if you tweak the creative style settings in the camera, you can get a pretty nice image. Well, that's pretty much all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed the video and see ya.